Okay, uh, finally, I want to say a few words about the uh, recent uh, U1 Higgs approach uh, by uh, Alessandro Pigotti and Daniel Stern. So, um, the setting is similar. You have a uh, Riemannian manifold, uh, let's say it's closed. And then instead, again, the functional comes with a positive parameter epsilon. But uh, instead of complex valued functions, which can be viewed as sections of a trivial uh, C bundle, we look at uh, complex line bundles, which are not necessarily trivial. So uh, we suppose we have a, a complex vector bundle with fiber C. And over M and uh, equipped with a Hermitian uh, bundle metric. Then um, for the functional uh, takes a section of L and a metric compatible connection on L as variables. So it takes one more variable than the uh, ginsburg landau function. And it has the following form. So I'll call it G sub epsilon. This is not standard notation. It's just because E is already used and I don't want to use F. And this seems to be the next best choice. Well, you don't have to agree with me on that. But anyway, uh, we're integrating over M. Uh, epsilon squared times the curvature of the connection plus uh, squared plus the uh, covariant derivative of the connection uh, norm squared. Sorry. Plus the same potential term as in the Ginsburg Landau function. Okay, so uh, F sub nala is the curvature of the connection nabla. So in this case, it's a, it's a purely imaginary value one form. This is called U1. And so the words U1 appeared in the name because uh, when you have a complex line bundle with Hermitian metric, you can locally trivialize it in such a way that the transition function uh, takes values in, in U1, or also known as the circle. And, uh, uh, and, and this is the, uh, the U1 uh, young mills higgs functional. So some of its primary features, you'll, you'll hear a lot more about this in Daniel's talks. I'm just giving you uh, a very quick um, overview of it. So its primary feature, some of its primary, uh, primary features are as follows. First of all, it has a gauge invariance. Uh, namely, uh, for all S1 valued functions from your manifold, or let me say U1. Uh, the functional is invariant under the following action. You can rotate your section and then subtract this one form from your connection. And that leaves the value of the functional invariant. Secondly, and more interesting, and, and uh, even more interestingly, um, it, its behavior is drastically different from, from the Ginsburg Landau functional. And what, one aspect in which they differ is. Um, uh, solutions on R2. So if you remember the uh, Brésis Merleau and Rivière result I mentioned above, for the Ginsburg Landau equation on R2, there are no finite energy solutions other than the constants. And uh, if you want non trivial solutions, you have to allow the energy to, to grow like log. Um, by contrast, for the Euler Lagrange equation for, for this functional, there are many interesting finite energy solutions on R2, and they 
were classified by Clifford Taubes. So uh, it admits finite energy solutions on R2. And one very interesting property these have is that they, have, they all have quantized energy. So their energies are all integer multiples of a fixed number. Okay, uh, these are all the work of Taubes in the 80s. Okay, so uh, in higher dimensions, uh, Stephen Bradlow and Oscar Garcia Prada, they studied a special class of solutions on Taylor manifolds. And uh, these are, those are, and show that those are uh, very closely related to complex submanifolds of the Kahler man, of the base Kahler manifold. On, on a general closed Riemannian manifold, uh, the existence of solutions and the uh, asymptotics as epsilon goes to zero for a sequence of solutions with uniform energy bound uh, was done by uh, Bigatti and Stern very recently. So uh, they show that uh, similar to uh, theorem B above, in the limit you get a uh, stationary rectifiable varifold. But uh, additionally, in this case, they can show that the varifold has integer multiplicity. And uh, that's closely related to uh, this quantization property I mentioned above for uh, finite energy solutions on R2. So uh, you'll hear uh, more about this in Daniel's talks. And uh, that finishes part one of my talks. So uh, thank you for um, sticking until the end. And um, I'll see you in part two. So uh, thanks.